We're looking at the Steps to Success Level 2 found on page 472 and 473. Step 1 says create a new workbook and save it as Pacific Sales. I've done that and prefaced it with my last name. Number 2 says import the data contained in the Pacific Region table of a database which is included in the files. And here is that database. Let's just open the database and see what it looks like. Here's the Pacific and it's got one table in it and it's got a bunch of company name, address, city, state, postal code, phone, etc. So we're going to import that table into Excel. If we go back to our spreadsheet, we want to go to data and here is get external data. And we can get it from an access database or from other sources. We're going to get it from an access database. We locate that database. Mine happens to be on the desktop. There is the database and when we open it, import that data into a worksheet. So it says there's a table in there. Where do you want to put it? We don't want it in the existing worksheet or we can put it in this since it's empty and then rename this. We want to name it something. I guess I'll just leave it there but we could put it to a new worksheet and give it a name. And it says, do you want to put it starting in I-8? I don't think so. I think I want to start it in A-1. So I'm going to say OK. And because there was only one table in it, it went ahead and put it in A-1 on that sheet. And we want to rename that sheet into something called Pacific Region. Number three says, sort the data first by state, province, then by city, then by company name. I think I'm going to an ascending order on each of those. I'm going to make my columns a little bit smaller so that I can leave the text rather large and you can still see most of this. Notice some of these are in Canada. That's why they're calling it postal code or state province. This is British Columbia, etc. How many records do we have just for the... Ah, we have over 2,000 records this time. We only had 1993 in level 1. Now we're supposed to sort this. So under data sort, we can go first by state province, then by city, add a level, and finally by company, and all these should be in ascending order, which is A to Z. So Alaska comes before British Columbia, so it's by state, then British Columbia, then California, then Hawaii, then Oregon, then Washington. So we've added our Canadian neighbors in the Northwest in British Columbia, and whenever we have multiples, here's Prince George, we have this many of those. Those should be in alphabetical order by company, D through W. Number four says calculate the total sales since January of 2015 for each company in a column labeled total sales. If we look at what's beyond the initial information about each company, we have a first order date, a last order date, a number of orders, and then we have sales by month. So each one of those months shows dollar sales. Here's another nice thing about a table. When we start another column, if it's adjacent to the table, it assumes that we want it to be part of the table. So if I start labeling this total sales, which is what they want us to call that column with no space, as soon as I press enter, it says, oh, that should be part of the table. So it includes this, it alternates the rows, etc. It does the same thing when you add records. You may, you may recall that when you're in a table in Microsoft Word, when you get to the last row in the last column, if you tab again, it creates another new row. Same thing here, another new row. So let's go back up to the top. Let's go back to our total sales. And now we would want to sum everything from here back to January of 15, wouldn't we? So I'm going to say equals sum. 
Let's just try our auto sum and see how far back it goes. Ah, it goes all the way back to the number of orders. We don't want that. So let's just do it ourselves. And we want equals sum. And we want to go starting back here and getting everything up through February 16. Notice when it's in a table, it didn't say you want you want the cells J2 through W2. When you're in a table, it looks at the column headings. It says this is a table called Pacific from an access database and the titles of those columns are January 15 colon through February 16. It gives you the titles of the columns. So that's kind of nice. As soon as I press enter in a table it assumes you want the same formula all the way down. So when I press enter it's going to copy that formula all the way down for me. Okay, so, so there are some nice things about a table. And then the last thing they want us to do in number four is to format everything, all those dollar amounts, as currency. So I'm going to go back and start at the original dollar amount, which is in J2. I'm going to press Control shift end end and that takes me to the last column, the last row, and selects everything. And now I want to format all those numbers as currency. Number five says hide the original columns containing financial information. The original columns that had financial information were J through W, all the sales for each of those months. Those were the original columns. So I'm selecting all those columns and I can right click anywhere and say hide every column that I have selected. And so now those columns are hidden it goes to I and then it skips J through W and we only see X. Those columns are still there but this makes the spreadsheet easier to read. Notice there's a little bit of a break there between I and X meaning there are columns that are hidden. If we want to unhide those columns typically one of the easy ways to do it is to select this column and then drag across the hidden columns and now say unhide and everything in between there will be unhidden. But we want to leave them hidden and it looks like I need to widen this column. Whoops! I widened everything because I had selected everything. Let's just select this column and widen it. Number six on page 472 says assuming a report date of April 1st 2016 in cell AC1 AC1 is way out to the right so let's put that report date in there 4-1-2016 calculate the number of days since each company has placed an order with the zone in a column named days since last order so I'm gonna put a new column here at the end called days since last order Notice that it is right next to that table. Days since last order. And when I press enter, it says, since you put it right on the edge of that table, I assume you want it to be part of that table. So it formats it, it includes it as part of the table. And now we want to figure out what's the days since the last order. And we're assuming that this is today. So where's our last order? It is column H isn't it? And remember these are serial numbers so this represents the number of days since April uh, since January 1st of 1900 and this represents a number of days and all we would have to do is subtract them and that would tell us how many days between those two dates. So I'm gonna say days since last order should be equal to this later date and I want to absolute value that because when I copy the formula down I want it to stay with that date so I'm going to take that date and subtract the last order date 
and notice because we're in a table it doesn't say column H2 or cell H2 it gives the name of the column with that square brackets and the at symbol so that makes the formula a lot easier to tell what it's doing we're saying take whatever's in this date and to make it even more self-documenting we could name this cell I'm gonna go ahead and do that in just a moment I'm gonna go ahead and enter this it assumes in a table that if you put a formula somewhere you want it to be copied all the way down and so it did that for me automatically and then it says format the values as a number with zero decimal places obviously it's been 71 days not seventy one dollars and zero cents but it formatted this column the same as that one when it automatically added it to the table so I would want to select everything in that column and I would want to format it not as currency but as a number with no decimal places and that would tell me how many days it's been since the last order if we give a range name to this cell instead of calling it AC1 we're going to give it a name of report date now I'm going to substitute this I'm going to click here and now that I've renamed it it will call it report date that is an absolute reference and so now when it copies the formula down none of the results have changed but now anytime we look in that cell and see the see the formula we know immediately what it's doing so naming things is always a good thing in number seven we want to figure out how many years there are between the first time they ordered and the last time they ordered so using the year frac function it says that returns the year fraction representing the number of whole days between start and end date start date would be their first order date which is this guy end date would be their last order date which is this guy and then the basis which we can find in the help file or right here when we're not in the uh, function wizard this tells us what the things are I'm going to use the actual day count basis so I'm going to put a number one as the third parameter and now it tells me that's basically seven years let's look March 24th to March 21st so it's 6.99 years we want to format that not as currency but as a number with two decimal places